This is Twit. Eric, New Jersey. Hi, Eric. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hey, Leo. Um, big listener, thanks for taking my call. Thanks for calling. Thanks. Um, I, uh, I'm a little wary about something that I, I've read is coming around the corner uh, with Apple. I'm a big uh, Apple device user. I got uh, desktops, laptops, phones, all that stuff. Yeah. And I've read that um, on June 15th, uh, Apple is going to effectively require that if you have a third-party program that's accessing information on iCloud, that they're going to effectively require that you have two-factor uh, authentication set up in order to generate an app-specific password for, the, for that program to access the iCloud data. Right. Is that something you've heard about? Yeah. So um, two-factor, which you do want, is a good thing to turn on. The problem with two-factor is not all applications... Uh, use modern authentication techniques. Uh, many, you know, you, you've, you've got a lot of applications where you just log in with your password, your Apple password, and it goes, okay, that's fine. We'll use the iCloud. But if you, but if you turn on two-factor, that won't be enough. Apple will say, well, yeah, but what's the second factor? And these applications don't know anything about it. So that's the workaround. Hang on, I'm going to take a break. I'll explain what app-specific passwords are. They're very common. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. We were talking uh, before the break to uh, Eric in New Jersey, and I apologize for putting you on hold, but, uh, you know, the schedule being what it is, we got to keep to it. But uh, it's such an important topic, I'm glad you could hold on, because I do want to talk about this. My so, pleasure. So second factor authentication is uh, something I encourage everybody to turn on if you have it, and most places have it now. The idea being, you, you, I th the whole issue with authentication is how do you prove you are you? It's very important, of course, if you're banking, but if you're using iCloud, all your stuff's on iCloud, just ask Scarlett Johansson. Really important that you keep control of that stuff. Sure. So second factor means uh, there's three possible factors. Something you know, something that's in your head, something you have, like um, a dongle, a token, and something you are, like biometrics, iris, fingerprint. And combining two or three of those makes it an, really an order of magnitude more difficult to, to crack your account. A, pass, a hacker can maybe brute force your password, but it does, does him no good if he doesn't know your, uh, you know, he doesn't have your eyes or your fingerprint. Uh, so the way Apple does two-factor, they, uh, they have a second factor which requires that you have another Apple device, an iPhone or an iPad or a Mac, you log in on one device, and then the other device will send you a, a, a four or sometimes a six-digit code. Uh, sometimes banks do it with text messaging. That's actually not a good idea. That's lately been discouraged because uh, it's easy to spoof cell phones or to hack them. Uh, it, you may also have a, a program on your computer or your phone, an authenticator program. Google makes one. Microsoft makes one. A lot of companies make them. I use one. Uh, called Authy, A-U-T-H-Y, and that does a time-based authentication, which is also a six-digit code that you would only know if you had, you know, this second device, this thing you have. So Apple's going to require, they've always, they've had two-factor for a, a while now. I think it's, I can't remember if it started with Sierra or El Capitan uh, for iCloud. And I do tell everybody to turn on, even though it's a pain in the butt. And Apple, more than most makes it a pain in the butt. They often ask you for uh, re-authentication. Even if you're using a fingerprint, you know, even if you've used the same computer for years, they, you know, they always are asking for re-authentication. So it's a little more uh, of a burden than it is, say, on Twitter or Facebook or Google. Can I ask a follow-up, Cleo? Yes. Well, let me just finish that. They have said that on June 15th, if you don't have two-factor and you're using non-Apple applications, and there are a lot of them, with iCloud, you will have to turn on two-factor. And because those applications, as they're currently written, don't understand two-factor, you will have to log into your Apple account, verify with two-factor, and then generate a specific, what they call an application-specific password that you use only with that application. So then you log in with that application with your regular 
iCloud address and this special one-time password. And that gets around the problem that the these these apps don't understand two-factor, but still gives you an added measure of, of protection. So that's the whole story. Yeah, this, this comes up because I have uh, a well-known, uh, respected uh, calendar program, you know, that sort of effectively sucks information off of the iCloud. Right. And, you know, it just seems, frankly, like a lot of trouble to go through just for a calendar program. And what bothers, what kind of worries me a little bit, and, you know, maybe I'm being a little jittery, is what happens if I don't have a trusted device around right. <laughs> when this happens? Well, you know? the, the good news is you won't have to do it more than once, in theory. You just do it the one time you set up that calendar program, and it won't need it again. Your calendar program, as it stands, doesn't ask for your password every time, does it? Absolutely not. No. Yeah, so it won't in the future either. But really, really, the calendar program is unchanged. Right. What's hap The way the calendar program works is it logs you into your iCloud, but iCloud's going to say, well, wait a minute. You are not an Apple program, so I'm not going to let you log in with Eric's email and password because you don't do second factor authentication. So you are going to have to have a special one, you know, password for you that Eric's going to get. And then, but, but as far as the calendar program is concerned, it doesn't know the difference. It just logs you in and stays logged in. But I got to, I got to leave two factor on indefinitely forever. Um, just in order to uh, probably not. If that calendar program doesn't ask you to re-authenticate periodically, some do. But if that one just once you logged in for years, it goes. You probably won't have to do anything. I don't know if you. That's an interesting question. If turning off two factor will break it, it might. In which case, yes, you have to leave it on. Uh, I know. I know you got to go, but just just to just to say one more thing, quick. I mean, it seems to me like a lot of third party apps are going to run into this problem, and because there's going to be some ticked off people. Well, it's happened. For instance, um, I use third party apps with Facebook, Twitter, and Google. And I've been doing, you know, my my email. I have to do application specific passwords. We this is not a uh, this is a standard industry practice. You're mm -hmm. right. Uh, I guess people will be ticked off because they have to turn on two factor. But but really, I I mean I understand that it's slightly less convenient, or maybe even significantly less convenient. But it is such an improvement in security. I strongly encourage people to use it everywhere you can. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Yeah, you're right. I mean, people are going to be pissed off because it's another step. Security, this is the problem with security. It's always a balance between convenience and security. You have more security, less convenience. More convenience, less security. I mean, the most con convenient thing would be, hey, I'm, I'm Eric. Let me use my iCloud. I, I don't need a password. That would be very convenient. <laughs> it would recognize your computer maybe once you'd logged in, and that would be that. But it would also mean that bad guys could probably easily get into your account. And we're seeing this happen. It, Apple had a big problem. Remember, a lot of celebrities' iCloud accounts were hacked uh, not so long ago, a couple of years ago. So uh, everybody does this now. And you might say, well, I don't need to protect my Twitter account. And you're right. You don't have to turn on two-factor most of the time. Apple... At where Apple is going a little farther is by requiring this. And it is going to be a pain because you will be logged out of all of those third-party apps. And there are lots of them that use iCloud for, you know, for a document backup. I use a, an editor called BB Edit, for instance, that will save my documents on the cloud. All of a sudden, that will stop working. And I will have to re-log in to iCloud. And at, the process will involve... <laughs> Going to iCloud.com, logging in, doing the two, the second factor. If it's not on, that's even worse. In fact, uh, when I tried to turn on two-factor authentication a few months ago, I, you know, once they, once when they started offering it, I, I turned it on because I wanted to use my Apple Watch to log into my Mac, and in order to do that, you had to have two-factor. And uh, and I, there was a, I can't remember what the deal was. I had to change, I think, my address. At which point Apple said, well, fine, but you can't now turn on two-factor for a month. <laughs> I was like, what? Three days, I'd understand, because they want to give you, you know, if a hacker's doing this, they want to give you time to notice and fix it. They said a month. So I had to sit and wait for a month. So you might, <laughs> if you're going to turn on two-factor, if you have third-party apps, you might want to do it now, just in case. If you're using iCloud, turn on two-factor authentication. 
in case there is a, a waiting period, which I found very frustrating. And that would mean then I would no longer be able to use my iCloud backups uh, because of this. Apple errs, I should say, on the side of inconvenience, of security. And I've never had a device that asked me for a password more often, even though it has strong authentication with a fingerprint. There, my Mac stuff, my Apple, my iOS stuff is always asking me to log in again. It drives me absolutely nuts. The Apple Store, you know, almost always I have to re-log in, even though I've authenticated with fingerprint, I logged in. It drives me nuts. Even to get a free app, it makes me do this. But this is Apple. Um, and and I and I really do want to say that erring on the side of security is not a bad thing nowadays, especially. But you're right; some people will be miffed and inconvenienced and annoyed because that's that's security. It's annoying. <laughs> uh, it's for your own good. <laughs> that's all I can say. It's all for your own good and for the good of the internet. Because uh, if you're insecure. That, that causes problems for everybody.